when it's time now to digest some code and and even even if it's not on schedule and we said we only do fish on schedule i really want to get going on, on fish again so <clears throat> let's get going let's get going let's get going and today is a rustification of fish and i'm on the big screen i am big now so while you enjoy that and i'm enjoying that after streaming the tourist for six hours yesterday um why are we not live? Let let me give me one second here. Something is fishy. Something is a bit fishy. Okay, this seems to be working. Oh yes, I'm big and big and big and big and um. Okay, lot lot lots lots of stuff today. So. Random notes. Just, just reminder for me. I should have written that down before the stream. Uh, um, tweak setup. A uh, new camera should have improved the picture, but somehow the white balance. I cannot get it under control. So, so let's see um, how that goes. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm. You see, I'm a bit transparent, but maybe, maybe that helps. So that's actually fun. Um, yeah, so I'm switching to the to the small picture now. You you've seen enough of me. Let me know if you want to let me know if you want to see more. Better camera, different light, still still juggling and yeah, the usual. So let's go smaller. And my stream is gone again. I'm not sure what's happening here. So I hope you can see me. Yeah, so <coughs> Also changed setup. Um, this is the external screen of the new MacBook. Uh, I hope the resolution is good enough. I guess I'll make the font size one one notch bigger. Um, the the capturing. Well, <coughs> I'm not boring it with details. Let's dive right in. So, fish has been a while, and I've been. In Switzerland for weeks snowboarding and the plan was to stream from there in the evening my fish development but the Wi-Fi was well there was no Wi-Fi even if we were promised broadband in the in the flat so couldn't stream sorry about that we'll catch I, I did some fish work nonetheless and I'm gonna catch you up on that right now so if you look over here um, we submitted uh, reviewed and released v fish v2.2 and, and what were the big changes in, in v2.2 so so for once uh, we tweaked the rendering and i'll do a little bit of dive into that in a minute but basically when we when i started working on fish again about two months ago the base om library remember the the base om library here had diverged for another project which is hopefully soon to be launched and has been split into into om library and omgfx so when i switched back to fish i needed to branch off om library to keep it working without rewriting everything and and as you can see here now um both of these are now at master so all the rendering code is in the gfx library and all the other code is still in the OM library. And, and there's also an OM game um, repository, which I'll get into later, but basically it's OM lib being split into three parts. And uh, if I go to Sublime, you can see, um, th this is basically the first commit I did. I've, this is where we left off last time. Well, this is where we left off last time for the 2.1, then I, and then I did some TMX rasterizer fixes, but not important. And then I I updated it to do for v2.2. And and the big change here was update to a new OMGFX lib. Um, get rid of STB image, because basically 95% of all errors and warnings thrown during the build process were thrown by STB image, because it was just doing some crazy stuff. And then we, yeah, tiny, tiny thing. I, so here's the thing every time i i do an update i want a user visible change and this was kind of a cheat i knew that apple is gonna close uh, the app store from december 
23rd and I wanted to squeeze it in, but the rule was use a visual, visible thing. So I said, okay, add the game version string to the to the options screen. And, and actually we can, I can show you what the use of visible changes. Well, well, that was more to it. I'll let you know in a minute. So where's my simulator? Oh, nice. I, I'll, I'll turn off the music. Ah, and you see here's a real game version. We only had the game built initially there, which was important for us, but this is also game version 2.2, and actually this will be extended into, hey, you have 2.2, but current is 2.2. Three, four, or five. Uh, please update. So this is a user visible change, and it was a bit of a cop out, but but at least we didn't break our rules. And sometimes you have to cheat a bit, but sticking to your rules is important to keep the flow going. So let's stop this and let's switch back to Sublime. So this was the first commit, and you can see by the amount of pure amount of commits, and this is just this one repository, and then loads of. Let me make this a bit wider. Oh, we can. Um, a lot of changes. So th this was just yeah. This happens when you work on Windows, where casing doesn't care matter. So so this was just fixing. Fixing basic basically include casings. Um, so we fixed minor validation errors. Um, <clears throat> we switched to explicit OMLIP with fish patches. <clears throat> so we and and I'm not going to go into OMLIP, but basically I merged the OMLIP stuff that has deviated from the base lip into into master on OMLIP, and then switch to that and this didn't build so i had to change some passes and i'm not happy about this here um this will need to be fixed so basically if you look into into om lip here and have to include for example i didn't want to and then you say okay shared code and then mass so basically when we include or let's use um Let's use base. So when we include anything from base, we do it like this. So the, the base prefix here. So that's why there's a subdirectory here, because this is the include pass. And and this is the base. So so it's it's cleaner. And when I did the graphics and I didn't want to break the other four projects that doing the graphics, I kind of put everything right under here well this probably ui is correct but this should probably be shared graphics everything that's in here so that's why for now the the prefix had to go um then i started to use uh, config files because sometimes you need stuff like frameworks and then you have to add the framework here and then in every project you have to add the framework because we're using for example mobile core services was new in this one and that can get quite cumbersome so so basically every library has a config directory now and there's a config in there um, why can't i open this Hmm. Oh, let's go down. This is probably already three versions ahead, so let's... Oh, okay. So we're using config files now, and basically, okay, release and debug are the same, but we could put specific stuff in here, and then we use a base config, and that's using omgfx config. Oh, let, let's do that right now because this file was renamed and yeah so this should be here and that's when you have two sources of truth you have the project file and the file system and for me the source of truth is always the file system so let's just yeah so this is basically the the config file which we added here it get renamed since to to be a bit more clearer and 
don't have name aliasing and, and actually let's well while we're here yeah this is better and and you can just say okay preprocessor definitions okay inherit everything and this is good practice not to not to just plane overwrite but extend and say okay this is a platform we use ios this is we use the old OpenGL ES uh, renderer, and by the way, add these include forts and parses, and so it's it's the GFX root, which is the source root, which is here, and then the GFX, and then the include shared, which is uh, iOS, which is here, and then the shared, which is here, which you see here, and then the renderer root is is basically the OpenGL ES renderer. And there's more than one render in this directory, but we don't want them in the project, so we can't see them here, which is okay. Um, so that was that change, switch to config files, and there's more tweaks, and then then a lot of updating the project file manually you just saw me doing that. So basically clicking here, saying, okay, add files, selecting a bunch of files that are... and, and Xcode is actually super helpful because it says, okay, these are gray because you added them, so it's pretty easy to spot the missing one. And then obviously in OMLib doing the same, removing them. So lots of, lots of housekeeping, and you can see this this patch is gigantic just for, for basically three clicks. But I, I want to write a tool that that synchronizes the... Uh, Actually, let's let's put this um, future um, OM tool to synchronize, or at least verify Xcode project project structure versus excuse me versus file system. So especially especially if you have libraries, so somebody somebody um, splits up a file, and and I'll show you one of those cases in a minute. Splits up something, and then then in fifteen projects you have to add the file to the project again, and it, it's in the file system. Why should it be in the file system? Sorry, ranting, stopping now. So basically, this this is this patch, and then then. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> this mouse wheel keeps scrolling when it's not scrolling anymore. So, yeah, this is again updated OM gear GFX, and there are a lot of patches in lib and GFX that kind of align with these, but I just want to give you a quick overview. Um, look in the camera. No. Do you want to see me, or do you want to see the code? <laughs> okay. I like that you want to see me. And I like these buttons. Um, so more of these graphics and, and basically, okay, then then I was hitting a very strange Xcode box. So basically if you change a header file and don't, ch it very aggressively caches the, the header files. And the only way to fix that is to clean the project, close Xcode, open Xcode, rebuild the project from scratch, because otherwise I had compile errors for files that I had deleted or that were different or so. Lots of um, removing forward declarations. And it becomes clear if I go into the renderer and 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 Windows is basically dead for uh, the OpenGL renderer is, is dead for now because it was compiling this even with with this this not defined and this defined and that was the bug I was hitting so lots of back and forward and I really need to back fix the other platform but I couldn't get myself to touch Windows right now so basically here we say depending on the renderer that is selected. Uh, we include a different implementation and then just uh, define renderer to be the implementation so that this is pure compile time, time overhead. We could just subclass but then have the virtual function pointer table on every call and especially in the renderer. It's a compile time decision. 
there's no runtime dependency that decides, okay, I'm OpenGL or OpenGL ES. It's just pure, I'm iOS, so I'm ES, I'm, I'm Mac, so I'm Metal, I'm Windows, so I'm DirectX or Vulkan or whatever. So catch it early and don't compile in all the stuff we need. So, so yeah. That, that's a quick overview of what happened here. And that's why the forward declaration obviously doesn't work with this. So we had to remove the forward declarations. And uh, this all will get a bit easier with when we get into new C++ standards and use modules. Um, but yeah, there were some loops. So we had to switch to Pragma ones and not going into that it was just a gigantic uh, cleanup patch and here's another of those include file configs and more files added and removed and moved and all this stuff here is basically you don't need it it's a file system just do what the files are. sorry that point again and then yeah and then i split this up in tiny little steps and you can see yeah and and <clears throat> And then, uh, yeah, the set offset was something that was very, very fish specific that I didn't like. That that's basically the the background phase. And I basically said, okay, I just want rendering working again. So let's kill that for minute, for the moment. And then um, here's the graphics thing again. The default is, font is basically gone because the idea ID of the default font is always defaults default. So. Let's kill this. Um, a lot of, um, yeah, some con stuff that shouldn't have worked from the start. So the const was removed. Here was the non-const version. More, more includes and lots of, lots of identify one, one type of problem and then fix it everywhere. And again, moving files around. Um, the scrolling is a bit annoying. So I'm gonna gonna go faster now. Remove files. Uh, and then then I added uniforms. Actually we we just used that offset. So I added support for uniforms and I'm just gonna show you in, in the renderer. So we had this one hard coded offset uniform, but that's actually not what we want. So let me widen this a bit and then we have the renderer. And we have this set uniform float now. And see, we're switching to standard strings one by one. And, and if I go here, it just says, okay, if you set a uniform float, it's always for the current render effect. And and it just has a, has a basically, this is a hash map. So it just says, okay, whatever you want, I, I set it and then then when 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 I'm supposed to render, mm, let me. So when I bind the render effect, uh, and we go into this a bit later. But basically, this is this is the hash map we just saw, with a with a this this name has this value and so on. And, and remember, render effects we probably have we have. Okay. We saw we have about 22 render batches right now in the game. So this is called 22 times per frame. So I didn't care if it's performant and we're using standard iterator, iterators here. And, and we just check, basically this is the value and this is the, the index, the location of the, of the value in the shader. So basically we check uh, if it's already in the list, uh, then then we use use the cached value otherwise we get it from the shader program and throw an error and put it in the list so basically for every value this should only be called once unless we use one that isn't is in the shader then this will basically throw a lot or just break once so this this again this is called right now this whole loop has exactly one value so this is called every frame but this is called this code here is only called once and this is called in the other cases so so that's fine and then we just set the uniform so now whenever we add a uniform we can just just we don't have to hard code it anywhere we just use set set uniform which we just saw and that's it yeah 
So that that's that fix. I just wanted the offset back. I updated the to-do. Um, yeah, just to remind me, I added the versions to the option screen and that was super straightforward. If, if I just open the option screen for a bit, So basically, this was already printing the GLES version. So, so we have this string, this char buffer here, and again, to be switched to standard string. But basically, we have the info box. Let, let me start this real quick. This is too big. I should use a smaller simulator. So basically, this is the info box here. And then we have, uh, we use the box here as a parent to a label and this label has has the default font it's left aligned it's centered and it has this buffer so this is GLES version 3 and this is the bottom line and <laughs> ignore that it's going from bottom to top there was some upside down hack foo that I forgot about and then basically here we do the same for game build and all I had to do was to add the game version here and obviously we needed the short version here so so the big J add here was the get short version from the platform and this is basically this is the same pattern so if we go to platform we have this okay depending on the platform we do different things okay we we are platform ios so so get version will be the ios specific code and in an ios we basically have it in the bundle so the bundle um the bundle it's basically it's this string here that we're reading out. So it's always correct. We never have to tweak it. We just use a string that's baked in any way. And on Windows, we do it differently on Linux and, and whatnot, but this is the way. And we get the main bundle, we get the info directory, we get the object for, for the short version string, and then we just convert it into an UTF-8 string. Should always be okay, because it's numbers and dots. So, and then we create a standard string from it. So that's that part. You see, I've been busy. And then, yeah, this is basically updated the marketing version because uh, it was, this is basically an uh, Xcode automatic fix because it was in the info P list hard coded and now it's just this variable. Um, remove the portrait mode. Uh, the portrait mode was in there when we implemented uh, Apple ads, iAds, and they needed to be started in portrait and long hack, but doesn't need it, isn't needed anymore. So yeah, updated the to do, more include fixes, um, started replacing SDB with native code. So I have no idea how this started, but <laughs> I found a typo in the, so disabled STB and removed the code. So that was in the sub module and we look into that in a minute uh, did a version bump by this was actually pre-release mode did a version bump with fast lane started to test v2 um, found an ugly bug in the background code basically let's go to background so on up remember we rewrote the the background code to to in the in the render to instead of rendering three two quads, we just render one full screen and scroll and and we ran into some precision error there. And actually, here's a set uniform float that we've seen. Um, and we ran into some precision error, but only on the device. So this was test submit to Apple. Actually, I was ready to hit the real submit for Revy button and realized, oh, if I play 500 meters, the background kind of starts to wobble a bit. And and then remember what we did for the, for the time. So I think it's in game. In game. Sorry. Mm, 
no, it's actually in application, isn't it? Give me a second. Well, we had some some time wrapping code somewhere. I'm I'm just <laughs> debug screen background. I'm not finding it right now, but we talked about that the float precision is is decreasing over time. So basically, that's what happened for for the background and. Basically, the background was scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling forever, and the value got very large. So, but it only kind of scrolled one pixel, which was one thousandth of one, so the third digit behind the period. And so it scrolled into five hundred, six hundred, eight hundred, and the precision in the last digit was was being lost, and then it started to jitter because it, it was jumping by pixels and in in the end the fix was was pretty easy i mean let's go to the update here background update and and this is all right but basically here we do the base class update and i'm pretty sure yeah decoration has an update And basically we had this code here that says, hey, if, if the dot project, if it flipped, so if it passed the, the end position, so if the dot product for the vector to new position to the old position is, is uh, if it flipped the sign, which basically is this, so if it goes negative, then, then we pass the endpoint. So if it passed the endpoint and it is in loop mode, it should just jump back. And the background wasn't doing that. And then <laughs> the fix in the end was super simple because basically uh, the background never set the end position. It, it just never did. And then you see this, um, let's go to the background. So basically, it never set the end position, and, and it cannot flip. And um, this has to be careful. This cannot be any value. This is tightly correlated to the speed because it needs to jump precisely. And it, there's some more in it, but it's it's kind of good enough. And then I had some debug code, which basically um, says, okay, jitter between offset and non-offset. So to to find find the perfect value so it was just every frame toggle between these two values and if you can't see any change it means the offset is right and this five so 500 years basically okay don't do it every frame because there might be sub precision glitches there so do it only every four turns and basically this 2000 or the 500 down here that we just saw has to be a multiple of um of this here so 500 times this is exactly the one. And um, when we do this hack, we have to do the other hack. And <clears throat> this is on our to-do list anyway, so I'm not going into that too deep today. And then I did another version bump. Uh, and while waiting for it to process, um, actually, I move, I realized the texture at, so, this is a 2.2. This this is what was released at as 2.2. So lots of code shifting around, updated to base library and graphics library that's four years newer, but loads of hat banging because of that header file caching problem. And <clears throat> so released 2.2 uh, just two days ago before the App Store closed for Christmas. So we release this on December 22nd and it's there, download it, check it out and let me have a... Am I talking too fast? I, I just want this, you know, this catching up down here where 
is catching up down here, which you can't see. Um, I want to get it out of the way. Uh, move the texture atlas into the graphics library, which was basically, yeah, it should have been there anyway. Um, and then we had three different spellings of app definition over the year and oh, the app definition. So the app definition, basically the, the, Oh, the con game view controller needs to know which app is talking to. So it needs the app definition here because when it's updating, for example, let's, oh, <coughs> that, this is glue code. Don't look at it. The game library already does that better. So the update. Th this is non-app specific, but somehow down here we need to get into the app and obviously then we need to know which app, but I don't want to hard code the app. So basically the fish app, okay, the fish app is subclassing the application and the application has a certain interface. Like you need to be able to initialize, shut down, update, render, set touched, uh, Etc. And this is what the the G, the the window. Let's call it window. And even if it's iOS, there's no window. It's always full screen. But this is what the runner calls. And this is non-app specific, but it has to call into the app specific code. So it needs to know the subclass. So we did this hack with the app definition. Where is it now? Which basically just says, okay, the app is a fish app. And and then obviously. In the, in the in the implementation, we just say, yeah, we have exactly this one app. And whenever the outside framework, generic, non-game specific needs, am I glitching in the, yeah, I am. Uh, I think this cable is seriously, bro well, whenever the outside world, which is generic, oh, this is annoying, um, needs the app, it just, uses this and it doesn't know that it is a fish app it is any application so we can just provide this one file and cross and link it in and yeah <sighs> much ado about nothing i'm not sure why this should be i can I, I need to find a better way to stream one laptop, merge it into the other stream, and too much details. So, and yeah, right now I have 999 unstaged files, but that's just a broken, broken git ignore, so ignore that. Um, so, we talked about this. And maybe, maybe I should have, should have, should have set the goals first. So the goals for today was uh, catch up on fish v two dot two, and and then the other thing is continue with the Rust tools. And basically, we did this. Oh, clean up the packer. Yeah, that's. That's basically this one. Um, by the way, can you read this? Is this font too small? Maybe I make this. Can I zoom? Zoom in? Maybe this is a bit better. I have no idea what's glitching here. <coughs> this is, this is killing my focus and whoa <clears throat> sorry so <clears throat> rustification so let's 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 dive straight in i mean remember uh, this thing here this thing will be said okay when this script runs then we have the first version of the packer ver working and and basically when this runs 
and says, okay, we have the first version of the packer working. And th this is pretty nice. So, yeah. So basically, this this is the new Rust version, and and we we kind of said, okay, th this is this is this this file here, and obviously, this was a hack just to warm up with Rust, and and I want to clean this up, but I want to clean this up step by step, and usually I would just keep working on this and maybe do a branch and then merge that back ideally i would just keep working on base and feature flag the the new layout um so yes um where was i okay but since i want this to be kind of easily show the progress in the future uh, what i will do is um, i just want to op find in folder oh no i want to open in finder give me a second Yeah, this this setup is not uh, fully done yet. Oh, I just pressed Shift Shift Command P and then typed install and then then said open in Finder and basically it's installed now. So in theory we should have a nope. Okay, but but we we know where we are. So basically this is here. Yeah, maybe we want this view. And so for future reference, I want... Um, I want the history to be visible here. So basically, this is what we did last time. And so this is fine. Uh, let's just... open repository i just want to use sublime here and this should be a repository and and we just close fish cuz so this is what we did last time and i could just keep on editing this but basically what what i want to do is i'm just i'm just gonna gonna copy and paste this copy And I'm going to rename this to Packer, Packer, Struct. You'll see why in a minute, and I have to be careful here, because I want to... Okay, so basically... This is still still the same. So if I go to, uh, I don't want to. I want to do the. We should add a git, git ignore at some point. <laughs> so let's let's just git at the pack script. Yeah, I like to shuffle between the the cargo toml. And the main, and then also the test data. So this is what what we will will add and just set. Nope. Commit message here. <coughs> so. Copied zero packer for refactoring. It's good enough. 
so and if we run pack here it's still working and by the end of the day i have to we want this still working so sorry about that where is my okay um so basically we want to look into this now and I want to clean up this here just to be sure that we have this and not this so <coughs> and um, usually when I have the worst first test case working I want to start to split this out this is this is already 200 lines with just the main and the main should just be the main and we're mixing concerns here so we have um, the command line parsing and then we have the packer handling here and here's here's the packer and, and the packer um the packer does a lot of stuff here so i want to clean this up a bit step by step and we already kind of started with the struct here which is nice but um we want to do a bit more so and and you'll see where this is going in a moment so let's call it archive and then <coughs> basically the packer handles all these things and tells the archive what to do and then we say tell the archive to save so it's, it's going to be a lot of cut and pasting today and i'm not sure about the structure yet so but basically um we have this entry here and this is files and uh, i don't like how this is this is i want to make the font smaller but and again, forgive me, I'm not a Rust expert, but debugging is good. Let's just put this here. And then what we want, obviously, we want to create. Uh, mm -hmm, not sure yet. So what we do, we iterate over the list. And we really have to resync the error handling at some point. Um, we have the buffer reader, we get the file lines, and then we write the output. So basically, the, instead of pushing the entry, we want to add an entry. And actually, we don't even want this. We want to give the base pass and the file name and have it added. So basically, we have a function here that says add entry naming naming to be defined and it's probably um no we're not going to make it mutable yet so so we, we can just we can just steal this because it's already there cut and paste programming for the win and yeah consistency embraces and this basically will return a bool for now and and just false because it's not implemented so basically what what we want to do here is to say okay some somewhere we need an archive So, create a new archive. So, we have let archive equals. I'm not even sure about the syntax here, if this will compile, but. Yeah. Oh, and we want to have a create function for the archive as well. J 
just 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 for now there are better patterns for this in rust but for now i'm happy with this and then we just say archive create just to to abstract some of that away so it it's telling me hey you you're doing it all wrong and okay may, maybe we we fix this one here i it's okay it's snake case not camel case i can live with this okay let's 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 write a bit more so so basically what we want to do on add entry um we have the files here which is a vector so let's let's just call it don't don't call it files let's call it entries and that's a vector vector of entry and if I had the rust compiler it would just tell me yeah it needs entries so entries back and I like the trailing comma just for oh is it back new I have no idea how to initialize an empty vector in Rust, so <laughs> yeah, I have no idea how to initialize an empty vector in Rust, but <clears throat> okay. So the archive has entries now, and on, on add entry, basically, we want to create do this. More cut and paste programming, so what we want to do is we create an entry, same here nothing changed and then we say self dot entries dot push entry and and yes there needs to be more error checking here but for now just say hey we did what what you told us so basically this can go and and now we do archive and this this will <laughs> This will create an error, and then we borrow. We don't copy. We talked about borrowing and copying, right? So basically, this this goes. So now we're adding to one list, and obviously, it will not work because. Um, Okay, so it's basically saying in line 146, it doesn't know how to do this because it says it cannot infer the type of files, which is correct because before, remember, we pushed an entry to files, so it was clear, but right now, where is here? We be a bit more explicit. Oh, sorry. That was. Did I mention that my Rust is rusty? Oh. Okay. So basically. We help the compiler, and this files will be gone in a minute anyway, so I don't care. But here, this says, "Hey, uh, self is a reference, so the data cannot be borrowed." And then push obviously is is modifying the arrays, uh, the vector. So, but it says, "Hey, if you want to do this, this self here, this self here should be this." So. Let me just blindly go and do this. No, basically it says, um, this is basically a const message right now in C++, and this is a non-const message. And then obviously the, the call here. So 
in line 113 we have a call that says archive add entry and we just made this non-const and now it's telling us or non we just made this non-immutable or we made it mutable so obviously it's saying hey in line 49 you told me this is this is constant this is immutable so what the hell are you doing so make this mutable and we added the list to the we added the file the entry so this this was easy and this already looks a bit better if you If you compare this, the loop already got a lot smaller and, and more cleaner. So at this point, we basically have have the archive. Oh, not fully. And now we want to write the archive to a file. And basically, I think what I want to do is archive.save and just say, okay, output this this is ideal for all this so so let's do this so save and and we know it's the save shouldn't be mutable so i'm i'm not sure if, if output is is the right name here but basically and and again paradigms bool is probably not what we want here but step by step learning by abusing so this does nothing we will get some warnings but um yeah it's not implemented so let's return false and probably should return some error variant there but Basically, what I want to do now is take all this code, this and this and this and this, and, and basically all of this, all of this, and put it in here. Naming and stuff still will be wrong. I need a bigger screen. Well, the screen is bigger, but that's... I guess you can't read if I go for a smaller font, so... But but if it doesn't fit on a screen, it's probably too big anyway, but... So I guess we can get rid of this error handling and and now it will throw because oh okay and error and basically yeah uh, let's use this signature for the for the save because then we can just pass then we don't have to update the code so Let, let's just cheat and copy the okay here as well. Cleanups and small steps don't. And, and if this is a packer, I mean, <coughs> basically we, we could just say, okay, um, so this this should almost work. I mean, obviously files doesn't exist here. We need to know that because what was files, what was files is actually self dot entries. Remember, we renamed that and put that into this vector. So same here. Wherever there's a files, we want, and I'm not sure if what the binding if the dot is binding more or the it will tell us in a minute oh it needs the base pass for okay so here it needs the base pass to to find the file name so <laughs> oh 
I actually, so what I'm seeing, this would also need the base pass. So we're constantly passing the base pass in and out, and technically the base pass is part of the archive. So I, I, what I'm tempted to do is do base pass string. Obviously this means base pass string. Can I just get an empty string? Oh, wait. Is it? And and now when we when we have the create, we want to base pass. We want to pass it in. And then we could remove this in a minute. I'm I I just want to fix this one here, one twenty eight. So basically we want to use the space pass and obviously the create uh let's see. And now it tells us, okay, um, when creating the archive, you have to pass in the base pass and actually nothing either than that. Com Compiler guided development, yeah. So technically this kind of works, but I don't like the duplication of the base pass here. So, so basically um, the add entry here passes in the base pass again. And this kind of it's the, the archive knows already, so let's remove this. So basically, the add entry here loses the base pass, smaller signature, and then the entry. The entry still kind of wants to know the base pass, so we give it to it. So this worked, um, so in theory, <coughs> okay, so let's, let's just to prove the point. Test data, test one, two, two. Oh, there's actually a typo in it. Oh, we remove it and run the pack again and, and it's okay. So if we trust our test case, this this was just clean up and as you can see the packer already is a lot cleaner. We we still have to think the about the error handling. And I actually don't want the pack file handling inside the archive. The archive doesn't know where it comes from. So Maybe there should be error handling here, but I'm going to skip that for now. And yeah. Why is it saying zero files added to archive? Number of files. Oh, the OK is supposed to return the number of files and not the number of bytes written so this should be number of files added yeah we can we can fix that right we can fix that four files added to the archive and um yeah, th this is step one, and, and probably the safe needs to be broken down a bit more. <sighs> but this was a nice, good hour, and and I actually like this. Um, do you have questions? 
about this. Um, this here actually is wrong because this this is I think the Ruby documentation that we couldn't read last time was broken. Uh, we need to fix this for the for the CHC naming. So I want to leave this in for the these debug traces in for the moment. Um, <coughs> I'm a bit tired after last night tourist marathon and, and we took six hours to finish this game, so I kind of like this. Um, I'm kind of tempted to do a load here. Just load it back in, but for now, um, yeah. I, I guess we do another short session tomorrow just to keep keep the flow. Uh, thanks for being here. Um, don't forget to subscribe. Um, want to see me again? Yeah, I'm sweating. The new lighting is, is insane. Um, see you again soon. Uh, actually, I'm gonna push this to the usual place. So I'm gonna stage what we just did. And say started. I, I explained the plus here before. I will again soon. Started to extract archive into struct. Commit this. Fetch. Rebase. Push, and this should be in the usual place right here. Want want to want to see it? Um, okay. Get. Uh, I'm going to show you the window soon. Multi-screen. Oh, bit big. Yeah, so what we did here, did today is is here. And this is already one step better. better. Uh, I'm not sure about the structure. I mean, obviously the next step would to to move all of this, move the packer into its own file and probably the entry also in its own, uh, sorry, move the archive into its own file. So here to to here, and then move the entry into its own file, and then it all suddenly becomes kind of readable. And if you work on it with with one more with more than one person, we stop stepping on each other's feet. So <coughs> yeah, we'll go into that next time. But but as you can see, um, writing a quick hacky version first, and then. I think this this can even go without the comments now because I create a new archive, archive create. Okay, don't need that. Iterate over the pack list. Um, yeah, okay. Okay, May maybe there will be a helper that that says, hey, do this closure for unnamed function, whatever you want to call it for this, for every file, every line in this file. The to-do can stay here. Um, this could be a bit more generic, I guess. So it could be for each line in file, do archive add entry. And, and everything else is gone. And then this, I want to make even more generic in the future. I mean, this is just boilerplate to be followed by boilerplate to be followed by debug boilerplate, to be followed by boilerplate. So I'm pretty sure we could kind of make this even smarter. Um, yeah. And and obviously this this needs resyncing, but I I think the Ruby documentation is lying. 
actually. So let me just quickly um, <laughs> doesn't like me today. So we have this um, pack file dot ruby, and actually here. This here, I actually want to put this this in here. Ruby, and this basically means replace everything that's not backslash w in Ruby with a space. And and I remember we looked that up last time. Uh, <laughs> So Ruby GSOP pattern. Uh, Ruby string GSOP. So uh, I want the official documentation. I want the what the double backslash W means. I haven't done Ruby in such a long time. Okay, so here a non word character, and it basically says everything that's not A to Z, lower and uppercase, zero to nine, or underscore should not should match. So zero to nine, A to Z, uh, we did a down case so we can skip this underscore, but then we found that the Ruby code also matches, match the dot and the dash and the percent, even if, if nothing here in this code suggested. So this needs some further investigation. So let's be, A to Z, zero to nine underscore, but Ruby actual code behave behaves differently. And actually, this this shouldn't matter if if you're consistent. But right now, we use a Ruby. We used to use a Ruby converter, and the loader in C plus plus actually matches the Ruby converter, and then. We replaced that by the Rust converter. Let, let's actually look look into Xcode and um, archive file system. Oh, this this is going far too deep. Let's let's just just skip a bit here. And basically, this this is the loader in C plus plus, and I want to get rid of all of this and replace it by Rust two, so it, it's one source of truth. But basically, it does some magic here, and, and basically here it reads the file in. Let, let's go to the header. So. It does this find file by CRC. So the archive file system doesn't even know the file name. <coughs> so let's see. So the open uses it. The open actually gets the file name. This is actually still the name. And then we go this dream open which is here. This just does a get lower of the file name, which is a bit weird. <laughs> it's just... Okay. <coughs> so this just iterates over the string and depends via the CSC table um, 
the bytes and this just says everything that's not uppercase A to Z What the hell? Okay. Oh. If it is uppercase A to Z, it just adds 32, which, <laughs> which makes it um, a ski table. Yeah, cookies. So basically, uh, the trick with, with ASCII is the A to Z here. Oh, I cannot. So the A to Z here, so 65 to 90, the lowercase version is uh, 97 to 122. So you can just add 32 to get or set that one bit to get to the right code. What I'm wondering is the Ruby code clearly also replaces maybe we just got lucky because that's just whoa danger for years and years we just got lucky Let, let's put this on on the to-do list. Investigate file name to CRC handling. Because this just smells weird. And actually, we're using this too. So this this is a uh, so if I search for G Gsub in in the whole tools directory, so we always do the Gsub W. Okay, this does an underscore. This is fine, but this does a replace by underscore replace by underscore replace by underscore so everywhere we do by underscore in the pack file we do replace by space um, this is a different gsub uh, he replaced by underscore so holy cannoli this is I, I'm smelling blood in the water Something is really weird. Want to convince me to dig into this today? Not today, but maybe tomorrow. Extra points for what song that was quoted from? I'll let you know tomorrow. So, but uh, I would say we cleaned up the pack a little bit and next time we clean up the pack even more. And actually I want to start to look into, look into next tool. Um, thing is we could, we could just keep cleaning the, the packer up more and more and more and more and more and make it what we believe is the right structure for a tool. And then we do the second tool and realize, or maybe we look at lucky and the, the structure fits and then we get to the third tool and the structure fits and we get to the fourth tool and the structure fits and then we get to the fifth tool and oh, the structure doesn't match at all anymore. So, so we just rewrite the four other tools or we could just, just kind of do them bit by bit, and I, I really like that. <clears throat> Sorry, um, having too much fun here. 
yes, I'm having fun even if I'm dead tired. Um, or we do go more breath first instead of death first, and then do more than one tool till we identify common patterns and then try to to struck to crash that down. Actually, I want to look into a way to to have this this where is it here i think this here this here should literally be two lines of code maybe five maybe seven including the error handling so let's just real quick so restage restage this file just for the some cleanups. And yeah. Always fetch before rebasing, otherwise you can just ignore the rebase. Um so ideally this this should be something like I'm not sure about the syntax for file name in helper open file list list pack list um It should be something like this. Plus error handling. Um, the helper could just do the whole find the files, do the splitting, uh, and just give me a an iterator, a vector, or a list, or whatever of, of the file names, and and also handle like okay, comments, white space, uh, whatever. And and if I make myself smaller, you can actually see what I did here. So the, this whole thing should be replaced by this, and I'm actually committing this as well. for file by line iteration yes i will accept pull requests i will totally accept pull requests for this but for today show is over Love you all. More rest tomorrow. See you soon. Bye-bye.